Welcome to Toku Showcase, a video series where I, the Toku professor, introduce Japanese special effects franchises, both prominent and obscure, to new audiences in brief, easy to digest, informative videos. If you're new to the tokusatsu genre, this is the series for you. And if you're already a Toku nerd, these are the perfect videos to share with your friends so they too can learn to appreciate tokusatsu productions. With Shin Ultraman's US release date fast approaching, and my biggest video yet, The History of Gamora, an incredibly detailed biography of one of the most popular Ultraman monsters, close to being published, it seems fitting that we'd start this new video series with an introduction to the Ultraman series. So let's put three minutes on the clock and jump right in. The creator of Ultraman was Eiji Tsuburaya, the special effects wizard behind Toho's Godzilla films, who pioneered the art of suitmation, a filmmaking technique in which human actors portray giant creatures by wearing elaborate monster suits and moving slowly through scale model scenery. While continuing to work for Toho, Tsuburaya established his own special effects studio in 1963 and began to produce a TV show, which would become Ultra Q. Initially conceived as a Twilight Zone-like production, with a few monsters like those of the Godzilla series, the show would end up focusing nearly entirely on the popular giant creatures, known as kaiju in Japan, and was a big success. Because of this, the Tokyo Broadcasting System requested Tsuburaya create a follow-up. The show that followed would prove to be an even bigger hit. Ultraman began airing in July of 1966 and featured a giant alien superhero named, well, Ultraman, a being from Nebula M78, aka the Land of Light, with numerous abilities at his disposal and a timer on his chest which began to blink when the hero was low on energy. Ultraman fought kaiju and evil aliens alongside a team of humans called the Science Patrol, one of whom was secretly able to transform into the enormous hero. 39 episodes of this series were produced, and many of Japan's most popular kaiju debuted throughout the show's run. The show was so popular that numerous shows involving giant heroes battling monsters started popping up everywhere in Japan. Tsuburaya next produced a show with a similar premise called Ultra 7, which while similar to Ultraman was originally supposed to be an unrelated story. Ultra 7 proved to be incredibly popular as well. Eiji Tsuburaya would die before another Ultra series entry could be produced. His son, however, revived the franchise in 1971 with Return of Ultraman, which was originally supposed to be about Ultraman coming back to Earth. However, at the last minute, Tsuburaya Productions decided to instead introduce a new Ultra being, who would later be given the name Ultraman Jack many years after the show's airing. The original Ultraman did appear in the series, however, along with Ultra 7. When Return of Ultraman concluded, more shows would follow, each featuring a brand new Ultra hero who would often team up with his predecessors. After Ultraman 80 finished airing in 1981, the show went mostly dormant for the next 16 years, until it was revived with Ultraman Tiga in 1996. Since then, a new Ultraman series has aired almost every year up to the modern day. The more modern series have a tendency to reuse well-known kaiju from the original shows, feature a continually developing storyline, as well as younger protagonists, and have become incredibly focused on selling toys to young audiences. But otherwise, each new show continues to follow a similar formula to the original productions created by Eiji Tsuburaya, and the lore of the Ultra Beings is constantly expanding. It's definitely a series worth watching, and I hope you'll check it out. This has been the Toku Professor, signing off.